put it all in context. David Burroughs, President, Chief Investment Strategist, Barometer Capital Management, joining us here in studio. Nice to see you. Great to be here. Um, what do you make of the, the mood of the market right now? I think the market is wrong-footed. Mm. Um, our view has been that the low is October uh, and that we have had now, you know, 18 months for investors to digest all of the things that the market's concerned about. And during that time, the flows have been decidedly into fixed income, into defensive sectors, the places people would hide in a recession. If you wanted to shift your portfolio, you've probably done it by now. And on the other hand, money has flown out of equities into money market funds, out of industrials and out of economically sensitive sectors, which have actually held in remarkably well. So at this point, you know, I hate to use the word pain trade, but the pain trade is higher. You know, uh, talking to clients, they, they want to argue why it is that the market shouldn't be where it is, but mm. it is where it is. Yeah. So our view is that a lot of negatives got discounted into the market. Things that should get hurt badly by an aggressive Fed tightening cycle actually held in pretty well. Materials are actually up from the beginning of the bear market, the beginning of 2022. So uh, we think that over the next period of time, slowly money will slowly work its way back into risk assets. And that's something you probably shouldn't fight. Is, uh, is it worth also considering? I mean, you're a professional in the industry where performance versus um, the benchmarks matter. Is, is that a consideration that's less based on valuations, but do those who have been bearish want to get, you know, caught with? It's it's a tough one because it you know we've had we had 2018 was choppy. You had 2020, which was very difficult with COVID. You had 2022 difficult. Clients are antsy, you know, and very few portfolio managers would have been really overweight the six biggest tech stocks, right? You know, in January. Didn't hear that. Which means yeah. virtually everybody's behind the benchmark. So there is going to be some performance chase. And seasonally, this is a tough two or three weeks we're headed into. Maybe there's a little bit of choppiness. Maybe tech is a little ahead of itself. But the market is broadening out. And uh, what do you think that means for the TSX? Th does that spell opportunity because we've lagged, uh, But if money is flowing back into equities? Well, there's some things that are, I think, really relevant. Certain subsectors and groups that have consolidated over the last number of months in a narrowing range have started to break out upward. A lot of them are sectors that have been, have benefit to the TSX, TSX like materials, for instance. Yeah. Canadian dollar has broken out of the trading range it's been in for a while to the upside. Global stocks are leading to the upside. The TSX is more correlated to global stocks than it is to US stocks. So yes, I do think that there is opportunity in the Canadian market. And I was mentioning those stats just on, on, on the central bank stuff only because it's been a unique time we have uh, had you know, that cautious lens for, I don't know. Well, probably, it's 18 months. Yeah. And in fact, for, for unprofitable tech, their bear market started February the year before. Right. So it's two and a half or two and three quarters years. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's been lots of time to reposition, and I think people probably are a little too defensive. The defensive sectors are very expensive relative to history, uh, and, and bonds, despite seeing the flows in, are really not making anybody any money. I mean, well, let, bond let, prices are down. Let's talk about that for a second, because you know, you know, if, for people who still pick up a paper or just see a headline, let's say, uh, yeah. on, on their phone, there's constant stories about how you're finally getting paid to be in in, in shorter duration products. Yeah. In, in shorter duration, so you're getting your coupon or the interest payment, uh, but yields have been quite sticky, and they are going to be sticky. It looks like. So that means prices aren't going up. A lot of bond investors buy the bond and hope that they're going to get some capital appreciation, certainly on a 10-year bond or a 5-year bond or a 20 or 30-year bond. You're actually losing money as rates have continued to go higher. So you're getting a coupon, you're paying tax, inflation is eating it away, and you're losing a little capital. I'd far rather be in a dividend growth security where we're getting dividend that's growing and and actually they're outperforming the, uh, the, the broader indices. To get that as well. Um, and then on the central bank front, uh, the, the, the fact that we are 
uh, worried about how far central banks will go to fight inflation and the recessionary risk from that. And you mentioned there, there are some folks who are sticking with a bearish argument. I mean, there have been reasons to justifiably be bearish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and we see that with some of our commodities uh, related investments as well. The worry about a global cool down and what that means for appetite, e even if you've got this dynamic where money is steadily coming back to the equity market. So what's yeah. the balancing act there? Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. And the hardest thing to do is to continue to keep in mind that financial markets don't move in lockstep with economic data, right? They proceed, they look ahead. And so markets have discounted, you know, a slowdown and in fact, recession. At the worst point, the S&P was down 26%. You know, that is about what you might expect for a typical recession. It do, it's not a financial crisis that it's discounting. And if we were to turn into something like that, it's a different story, but there's no sign of that at this point. So, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult. And I go back to the fact that even though energy prices and materials have come down a little bit in price from their highs, they actually have been much more resilient than what would be typical if you're headed into a recession. So uh, there's something the market's telling you there. Okay.